Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about normal maps and more specifically how to rotate them. One of the most common errors I see with normal maps is when somebody will rotate it simply by just rotating its UVs as they would any other texture. And you might be wondering, what's wrong with that? Uh, there's a couple of problems. For one, um, lighting, right? A normal map stores a vector that tells us what direction relative to the face, in the case of a tangent space normal, what, what direction relative to the face that pixel is pointed. So for example, areas in shadow like this uh, will have a particular value uh, on that normal map telling the engine that that's faced downward in this instance towards the ground. And if we move the light, uh, we can see how that affects it, right? If we move the light down to the bottom, it's illuminated. Now that's in light. If we move it to the top, it's in shadow. So uh, the normal map is giving valuable information to the engine about what direction a pixel is facing. And if we just simply rotate our UVs, it's not changing the information that's giving the engine. It still tells it that that face or that pixel is pointed downwards, even when it's pointed left or right or up. And so we get this effect where as this rotates, the lighting information is not updated properly. So <clears throat> what can we do to fix this? First, we're going to talk a little bit about what the normal map is actually doing. Right? So if we look at the normal, let's just get rid of everything else for now. What we can see is that the red channel is telling us about the left and right. And the green channel is telling us up and down in terms of how much the surface is pointed in that direction. So this bright green area, again, was pointed downwards towards the ground, for example. And again, if we put this back in, we can see this bright green surface is still telling the engine that it's pointed towards the ground, despite now being pointed towards the sky. So in order to fix this, we need to construct new, new directions, right? New values for the red and green channel that represent the new corrected facing angle of the pixel. And the way that we can do that is with a dot product and a little bit of trigonometry. So the dot product allows us to compare our normal map to a vector of our choosing. All right, so if I were to compare the red and green channel of the normal map to, say, for example, <clears throat> the green vector 0, 1, 0, we would get an output that exactly replicates our green channel of the normal map. And if I were to put negative 1 in this instead of 1 on the green channel, we get the exact mirror the dot product is comparing it and determining that 0, negative 1, 0 is the exact opposite of the green channel, right? So clearly we can use this to get an output that replicates our normal map channels or replicates the opposite of our normal map channels. So it stands to reason that we can use it to replicate a vector uh, that is pointed in any direction, uh, you know, a rotation of our normal map in any direction. So first thing we need to do is define an angle. So we are going to create a parameter here, call it angle. And this is, uh, in this case, zero to one angle, but you can do this in radians or 360 degrees. Uh, you'll just need to make some minor changes to this next bit, which is that in order to turn an angle into a vector that we can compare with our dot product, uh, here's where the trigonometry comes in, right? So if we have an angle theta, then cosine of theta is going to be x on a unit circle, right? It'll give us a coordinate, an x coordinate of a vector. And sine of theta is going to give us our y coordinates. And just regarding my earlier comment, if you hit the down arrow here, you can change the period of your uh, trig function in order to 
make it work with radians or degrees. But for a zero to one space, uh, which is probably gonna be the most convenient since that's the same space our rotator's in, we'll leave it at one. So now we have a vector that describes our, uh, our angle. So if we go ahead and use the make float to node here, add these together and preview this, we'll find that zero, for example, is red. And it goes from red to yellow to green to black, back to red, and so on, uh, and infinitely. So we'll just clamp that zero to one. And if we want to compare that to our normal map, we now, as you might be able to tell, have the ability to rotate it. If I maybe grab our time, you can see that it's sort of like this texture is being lit from different directions. All right, so what can we do with that? Well, this essentially allows us to construct a, uh, a new normal map with a new vector. So again, zero was red, and we know that taking the dot product um, of our red vector uh, versus our normal map gives us an output that's identical to the normal map's base red channel. So we'll use this as our red vector for our new normal map. And when it is at zero, it will be equal to our original normal map. But then how do we get our green channel? In zero to one space of a circle, uh, we need a perpendicular angle to represent our green channel, since green is going to be perpendicular to red in a normal map. So the perpendicular angle in zero to one space is 0.25, right? If you have zero to one, then 0.25 is 90 degrees, 0.5 is 180 degrees, 0.75 is again going to be a perpendicular angle, and then finally zero uh, or one uh, is the same position as we've gone in a complete loop. Right, so if we take our angle and we add 25 to it, or 0.25 rather, then we can take our trig functions here again, repeat our sine and cosine, and now we have a vector that is perpendicular to the other one, right? So if we look at this, this should be green, and this should be red. So if we then take another make float to, actually what we need to do is um, make the float to after we get our dot products. So we take a dot product of our red and green channel on the um, normal map against each of our angled channels here, or our vectors, our new vectors, and we'll get an output that looks exactly like our original normal map, right? And that's because, again, this angle is set to zero. But if I start changing this angle, we will change our normal map. And so, for example, 0.5 is going to be the normal map rotated 180 degrees, just like we expected. And to prove that this is working, we go ahead and plug that into our normal map. And let's take our time and we'll plug it into that and that. And then we need to give ourselves some color. Permissive, not permissive, but uh, roughness. And we did miss one thing here, which I'll add real quick. We need to append our blue channel back in here. And while we're at it, we can also easily add a multiplier for our normal map to adjust its strength, right? So I'll make this a little stronger here for the demonstration. 
But what you'll see is that as this is rotating now, the areas that are in light and shadow are changing accordingly, right? So we have this area dark and shadow facing the ground. And as it rotates up towards the direction of the light, it gets properly lit. And this is the expected response from rotating a normal map when we do it the correct way. So uh, what else is there to consider, All right? So if we want to look at another case real quick, I just want to show you uh, metals uh, and reflections, All right? So here is another material that has a reflective surface. And this is with the correct setup that I just showed you. But if I go ahead and take that away, what you'll find is that the, the reflection in our object is actually rotating with our UVs because reflections and refractions and other vectors in the engine rely on having accurate surface normal information to do their calculations. And they can't do that properly if we haven't rotated our normals properly. So correctly rotated normals are especially important for glass and metals and anything like that. But it's quite important on really any surface where there will be noticeable lighting information. And I just want to show you something too, right? So this shader right now is 199 base pass instructions, 269 for text shader instructions. If I go ahead and just plug in the normal map without the corrections to it, we get 195 base pass instructions. So it saved us four instructions to skip correcting our normal map and it could potentially dramatically reduce the quality of our result. So now that we understand the math behind our normal map, uh, and we've also managed to make a 2D rotation of our normals, let's talk about 3D rotation of normals because it isn't always just going to be rotating UVs. Sometimes it's rotating objects with world position offset. So for example, here I have a sphere a real sphere and a rotating cube using world position offset. And if we go ahead and go to our buffer visualization and select our world normal, what we can see is that as these normals are rotating, the orientation of the normals stay in line with our sphere, which is what we would expect. Um, and if we just turn this off, what we'll find is that as the rotation takes place, the normals of our normal map are starting to lose alignment with our true representation of the normals from this sphere here. And so this method that I'm showing you right now with this incorrect normal is actually really commonly seen uh, when using the fixed rotate about axis normals node, people plug in their vertex normals and they plug in their angle, they get everything set up just like they would with their rotate about axis. And, you know, maybe you blend it with a normal map, maybe not. And the output that you get is actually not correct, at least not completely correct when it's set up in this configuration, right? Um, the sides are actually correct, right? If I take this, uh, let's let it rotate a little bit. As this rotates, you can see here, as the correction gets applied, the sides aren't actually changing. And that's because they're, they're actually right. Uh, but the top surface, which is uh, along the same axis as our rotation axis, isn't getting updated because the... Uh, fixed rotate about axis is operating on the vertex shader and it doesn't know that this top surface is facing a different direction right? because it was facing upwards before and as the mesh rotates 
it's facing upwards still, right? No matter how much this spins, that is still facing up. So it can't apply a correction to it. Whereas the side surfaces, the engine knows that they're rotating because of the uh, normal information that's been fed. And so it can apply the corrections that it needs when we apply our tangent space normals on top. But how do we get this right, right? If this is the wrong information, what, what makes it right? Uh, so I've got another setup here that I want to show you that is very similar. In fact, the fix rotate about axis normals node just uses the rotate about axis um, node inside it. So if we go to our setup here, we've got our normal map and we're feeding our position vector into the rotate about axis. And rather than transforming it in the same way as we did our uh, mesh vertices, we're actually going to transform that into tangent space because that is the space that our normal map is operating in. So when we do that, we are going to uh, essentially be able to get normals that are rotating even in tangent space um, when they're oriented the same direction as our axis. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. But we've got in the same setup here as our previous material with the, um, you know, the time-based rotation, nothing fancy there. We have our axis, uh, which we are transforming to tangent space to feed into our normalized rotation axis. And then finally, we need to add that back to our normal map before giving that final output to our normal. Uh, now there is a performance consideration here. It's not just a couple instructions like before because the fixed rotate about axis normals node is operating in um, uh, on the vertex shader. So if we take our result here, for example, we have 189 instructions on the base pass, 377 instructions on the vertex shader. If we take our results from here, we have 197 on the base pass and 363 on the vertex shader, right? So we're doing more in our base pass and less in our vertex shader um, one way or the other. Um, and so it's more expensive to do this in the base pass than the vertex shader in general, just due to the nature of um, the shader in general, right? Um, if you could do something per pixel or per vertex, it's almost always cheaper to do it per vertex. But you won't get accurate normals if you're doing it per vertex. So that's something to keep in mind um, and hopefully something that you find useful. And I just wanted to share that with you so that you can take this 3D, right? But this rotate about axis node is ultimately the same thing as we did here, except that it's operating in three dimensions. And in fact, you could use it instead of doing this here uh, if you wanted to, right? You could set your your uh, rotation axis to be the, the Z direction, right? And then you could just do your rotation with the rotate about axis node. But I think it's important to understand fundamentally what drives the change in normal maps and why you can't just rotate them. Uh, but in any case, hopefully you find this enlightening. Um, notice that there really wasn't much information about this with respect to Unreal Engine specifically. Um, you can find information about it for other 3D platforms, but it's just something I see get done wrong all the time. Um, and yeah, well, thanks so much for watching and have a good one.